Today, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about how you can think about integrating a topic, a grammar focus, a language function, maybe key vocabulary, and base it on a particular level. How this might come together whenever you're planning a lesson. Now, I'm sharing with you here a 600 hour program for English language learners at a basic, intermediate, and advanced level. I ran this through ChatGBT, and what appears here is the exact output. I have not modified this in any way to show you there are some limitations and what I'm sharing with you here would have to undergo some some changes and modifications uh, for sure if this were to be actually considered for a real life situation but I think we can gain some insight in looking at how we can try to bring together these different aspects of a lesson even at the level of a particular class, a particular lesson plan, even though this is a, a, an overall program. So you notice here we have a basic level, we have an intermediate level, and we have an, an advanced level. And although it's cut off here, we have corresponding hours that represent or that are allocated to each level. And what I want to talk about here today is how you might think about bringing together a topic, a grammar focus, language function, key vocabulary based on particular levels. So starting with the topic, think of the topic also in terms of content, the content that, rep that relates to what you're teaching. Also think of understandings. And I created a page that I've linked down here below how to move from an, a notion to an understanding. So again, a topic, you can think of it as a notion. You can also think in terms of understandings and the six facets of understanding. So I've also included a, a page uh, to that, to uh, the six facets of understandings, if you want to look for an alternative to Bloom's taxonomy. But the topic, the content, the understanding, all I would say fall under this first column. This is the content. This is the context. Now the context of your class is going to take the topic, the understanding, the notion, and apply different question words to that topic. And, and for example, if you have a daily routine, all right, maybe you think of when a daily routine is important, why a daily routine is important, to whom a daily routine is important, Start applying the different question words to help situate these different topics. Think of a particular context, a situation, a scenario where these particular topics, notions, understandings would be most relevant and most meaningful for your English language learner. Then we have the grammar focus. So this is going to be a specific grammatical structure that is going to be the focus. That's not to say that it's going to be the only focus that you'll likely have to address in a particular class but this is going to be the main focus and sometimes it's hard to determine which kind of grammatical structure you want to focus on based on the level and this is why i ran this output to try to more or less get an idea about what kind of grammatical structure might be most appropriate for a particular level of student now, I've not included the age, which is another factor when you're determining what kind of topic that you want to address, but the grammatical focus, for example, if you want to focus on idiomatic expressions, now in this case, it has idiomatic expressions uh, aligned to a B2. I would say that you could certainly introduce idioms and expressions well before that if you wanted to, but um, it would be depend on the, com the level of complexity of that activity. Anytime you're designing a class, you have to take two things into consideration. The level of language that's required to complete the task and also the level of critical thinking that you're requiring your students, uh, that you're requiring from your students. So if you are 
if you are requiring a higher level of critical thinking, you need to take that in consideration when you're also applying specific grammatical uh, structures or a certain language requirements as well. So it's kind of a balance taking into consideration, trying to promote critical thinking skills, but not making it too demanding if the level of language also is um, is further advanced than uh, what they are maybe used to. So here we have our topic, we have a gr grammar focus, and then we have the language function. Now the language function is a little bit different than the grammatical structure that you're focusing on. When you think about language function, think of key performance verbs. Now here you'll notice we have introducing, we have describing, talking about daily activities, ordering food, asking or giving instructions. This is where you are be, you're going to be looking for specific performance verbs that are going to be most appropriate for your lesson. I, at this point, when you're looking at the, the function of the language, also take into to consideration the six facets of understandings, where you're looking at specific performance verbs and how those performance verbs fit into different facets of understanding. So we have six facets according to Wiggins and McTighe's understanding by design and all of the performance verbs fall under these six categories. We have explain, interpret, apply, perspective, empathy, and self-knowledge. And here I have a chart where different performance verbs fit within each of these. This contrasts Bloom's taxonomy. This is an alternative to Bloom's taxonomy if you want to get away from a hierarchical way of thinking about certain performance verbs and think in terms of degree. To what degree do my students understand the topic the, uh, or, or the context that they're asked to participate in in terms of these different verbs? Now granted, some of these verbs require higher order, higher order of thinking than others. But your job is to either plan or allow some of these performance verbs to emerge through the educative experience. And whenever you're evaluating and you're inferring how the students are communicating and what they're to understand through their expression of uh, language, of English as an additional language, that you're recognizing cer certain performance verbs that relate to the goals of the particular lesson. So we have our topic, we have our grammar focus, our language function, then we of course have certain key vocabulary. This might be individual words or phrases that relate to the lesson, and we have the level. So the only thing here that we haven't included that I haven't talked about here today, which really goes beyond the scope of this video, is also thinking about what part of language are we focusing on, which skill? Are we focusing on, on listening? Are we focusing on speaking, reading, or writing? Are we going to be focusing on grammar, implicit grammar, explicit grammar? Are we going to be focusing on pronunciation or prosody? These are different aspects of language that we still need to decide and integrate or plan for, especially if we're thinking about different teaching techniques or learning strategies that are going to facilitate those particular language skills. So you, that is still another aspect of your lesson planning that needs to be uh, considered. But I think this chart gives us kind of an idea about different aspects of language that we're going to be using to plan and and implement into our classes and uh, this gives you kind of an idea based on level how you can approach your lesson plan how you approach the class itself and ultimately when you're reflecting on your class going back and and evaluating how the class went in terms of meeting the, the objectives for the class. So I hope this helps and uh, feel free to check out these links. I'll share the link to this page that I'm sharing with you here in the show notes or in the description. 
And uh, feel free to look around how to move from a notion to an understanding and the six facets of understandings. And I could easily see another column or two added to this example where you incorporate understandings as well. You not only have a topic, but you also have an understanding. Certainly a notion could also be added to this, uh, to this table for even further clarification. So I hope this helps and uh, good luck in your lesson planning and implementation.